In this lesson, we are going to learn how to determine the absolute value of a complex number. It's really easy. Let me show you something. So let's say you have a complex number, which is 3 plus 2i. So I assume you've watched my previous lessons on complex numbers. Um, in summary, this is the real part. This is the imaginary part. If you had to go and draw that on a complex number grid, where this is the real axis, and then this axis here is called your imaginary, then what you would know is that the um, 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So the real part is 3, so you'd go 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3. The imaginary part is 2 up, so 1, 2, and then you'd put a little dot there. So that's where it would be. Now, if you wanted to know what this distance would be, then what would you do? Well, if this distance is 3, and this distance is 2, then wouldn't you just use Pythagoras to find that length? Well, that is exactly what the absolute value is. It's actually just a fancy way of saying, what is the length, or what is the distance uh, from the origin, which is this part over here, to the complex number. So we're just going to be doing a whole bunch of Pythagoras right now. So if we get to this one over here, um, you're just going to use Pythagoras. So you're going to just say, and your teacher, when they say what's the absolute value, they might put it in a um, absolute value sign like that. And so that's just going to be um, negative 9 squared. I'm just doing Pythagoras right now. Now for the imaginary part, don't put the i. Just say 5 um, squared. And if you had to go work that out, gives you 106. But then remember with Pythagoras, you always take the square root. So the square root of 106 is, you can just leave it as square root of 106, or if your teacher prefers for you to use decimals, um, then depending on how many decimals they want, I mean, you could round it off. Okay, so each school, each teacher is different. But we're pretty much just using Pythagoras. So let me just show you some more examples. Okay, so we'll do this example and then one more. So you just take the real part, put it in brackets. Then the imaginary part, put it in brackets squared. That's going to give you 200. Then remember that you need to take the square root of 200 because that's how Pythagoras works, right? You always take the square root. And that's going to give you 10 square root 2. If you prefer decimals, then that would be 14, 14. Okay, so what that would look like is on a real imaginary graph... If your real is negative 10, so then that's going to be negative 10 that way. So that would be, oh, Kevin, that would be like somewhere over here. And then 10 up, that would be somewhere over there. So what we're actually just calculating is this distance over here. Um, because we know that this length is 10, and we know that this length is 10. So we're just using Pythagoras. That's all we're really doing here. And then the last one, so you take the real part, and you're just using Pythagoras. And if you had to work that out, that would give you 80. And then if you take the square root of 80, that would be 4 square root 5. And that's going to give us 8,94 if you into the whole decimal thing.